What's good? Welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be talking about checklist must-haves before starting a clothing brand. First on the checklist is going to catch you guys by surprise, but it is uninformed optimism. What is uninformed optimism? I'll pop up a chart right now, but what it talks about is when you first get into something or when you first find out about something, whether it's a clothing brand, whether it's a certain type of business, whether it's personal training, whatever it is, you find out enough information to make you excited about whatever it is. You, you find out that people can make this amount of money on YouTube. You find out that this person can make this amount from being a bricklayer, whatever it is. You find out all the good parts of the information, but you're uninformed. And you, from that, are really excited about what it is, right? So you start off at this really high point. But then what happens is you reach this second point, which is called informed pessimism, right? This is when you basically find out about how difficult it is to do what it is. So such clothing brand, start whatever business it is. And then you get to this point where now we call it the valley of despair, where you now don't think you can do it. You think this is much harder than I thought it is. And this is the sector that a lot of people get to and then quit. This might be the reason that you quit the last whatever projects that you started is because you get to this point of informed pessimism, value of despair, where you now know enough information to realize how difficult it really is and then you choose to opt out or stop committing. But then the next stage is informed pessimism, right? This is where you're excited and you're happy and you think you can achieve it but because you're even further more informed, right? The reason I break this down is just for you to have an understanding of what point in this chain you really are at. I find that just knowing this, now knowing that I might just be excited about this because I don't know the amount of information, or I might be discouraged about this because I'm finding it about about because I'm finding out how difficult it really is. These things, knowing them in your head, psychologically make a huge difference on the business decisions you take or the life decisions you take or whether this clothing brand is for you. Are you doing the clothing brand because you really want to do a clothing brand or are you doing it because you found out enough information that people can make 10 grand in however amount of time and you don't know the information or maybe you're starting to find out and now you're starting to think, oh, is this for me? Am I really able? I've done my first drop and now whatever it is, I, can't, I don't think I can continue doing this. And that's the informed pessimism. Number two, we're gonna talk about red ocean versus blue ocean. What is Red Ocean versus Blue Ocean, right? This talks about the ideas of different business categories and it splits business into these two areas where you're either in a Blue Ocean or a Red Ocean. A Blue Ocean being um, an area where it's a brand new area with, un with no competition. It's a new product that hits a new type of client. Where Red Ocean is um, bloodied ocean from competitors being in the water competing for the same audience. So let's say, hypothetically putting this in a clothing brand sense, let's say you want to do gym apparel for, for guys, right? Or gym apparel in general, right? You're now competing against Gymshark, you're competing against a thousand of these other companies to make whatever it is that you want to make where keeping in the clothing brand sense where let's say you decide to niche down, decide to go for a blue ocean of an audience that hasn't been touched yet, such as let's say you go for Muslim women who want to do ballet, right? Or whatever it is, you go for a specific niche, a specific audience that hasn't been competed for, and now you're on this blue ocean, right? And now you're not competing for customers, and now you've got a, a product that, that can drive its own demand rather than you having to force it because you're now bringing a product up you know people don't really want. Last point is audience. Who is your audience and can you target them, right? So we get to this kind of point of where people can now come up with these business ideas that have these fine nuances of audiences or really fine niches, but the issue is you need to have an audience that you can actually target and you can actually find. Um, let's say your audience is um, early on mothers, mothers who uh, have just given birth and now looking for new clothes or whatever it is, right? You could go to list and purchase lists from um, kindergartens or sales things or being able to find people who have 
just given birth or mothers who have just given birth. It's an easy thing to be able to find men over the age of 45 who work in the finance industry. Whatever it is, you can be able to find the audience and be able to target them. When you come up with these nuances of audiences that can't be targeted, um, it makes your job a lot harder to actually find them. You might have a product, but it means nothing if you're not able to find the audience. And then going off that is, now also having an audience that you're able to sell to, right? I know someone who makes quite a lot of money selling marble bench tops to new, for, for people who are purchasing homes or building homes, right? He makes quite a lot of money doing that. But what's the point on me? Like, I could sit there and say, look, I want to do that job too. I want to get into it. I want to start selling it. But if I don't have the audience or I don't know the people to sell that to, then it's not going to work. It's, it's an industry I just can't. I can buy the marble, but I won't be able to move it. I won't be able to sell it. And that's because I don't have the audience. I don't know the audience. I don't know what the audience wants. And not saying that you have to target yourself, but being able to at least do the research and being able to find out who the audience is and being able to find the actual audience, it'll make an immense change on you being able to now target the, your, your persona of character. Because too many people have this kind of abstract thing of not knowing exactly what their character looks like or who the character is. And then now they're not being able to point everything else in the direction to be able to target that exact character. So let's say you are targeting, um, I know, middle-aged women, whatever it is. Or let's say a bit more fine of a nuance. Let's say you're targeting um, younger children, right? You want, you want ch clothes for younger children. You're probably not going to put the ads in the back of newspapers. You're probably not going to um, have ads of specific type of writing on them. You might not have have specific colors. It, all these little details all make a difference on font, this, that, based on who your target audience is and who that character is. Sorry, camera did die. We're back now. Um, if you do want to hear more about my little business advice, um, let me know in the comments and like. Um, subscribe, that would be very helpful. Um, if you want more information about graphic design, setting up websites, whatever information you want to know, let me know and I'll create more content about that. Um, peace.